So now we move on to the third method of finding the amount of energy required to construct a uniformly charged sphere. So in this method we have two components and then we're going to integrate along this spherical shell with radius a. So for the first component, this is a falling integral, we're going to, multi uh, we're going to integrate the electric field square uh, along the region enclosed by this spherical shell. So it goes from 0 to a, so the region inside of the spherical shell. And for this surface integral, we're going to integrate across the surface the potential multiplied by the electric field at the surface multiplied by this small uh, surface surface element. So just standard procedure for surface integral. So in order to solve these two, you need to find the electric field and the potential. So uh, I've written down the results here. So I think you've calculated these before earlier in the book, so I'm not going to derive these results again. So just take these for granted. So I'll just try to solve these two components separately and try to add up the two two results. So let's consider the volume integral first. So obviously we're going to use spherical coordinates, so the tiny bit of volume is going to be equal to this. And then of course the bounds they enough to R to A. So 0 to A, 0 to pi, 0 to 2 pi. So that's the area enclosed by this spherical shell. And then once again there are no phi terms inside so we can pull out the 2 pi. There is only one theta term, sine theta, so we can integrate from 0 to pi for sine theta, that's going to be equal to 2. So all we're going to be left with is this, r squared dr. And then we're going to have to break this up from 0 to r. And the reason why we're breaking this up is because the electric field is different when you move outside of the sphere, so when you move outside of a. So we're going to have to break this up. So from 0 to r, once you're inside of the sphere, the electric field is equal to something like this. And then once you're outside of the sphere, this one is simpler because you can just treat it like a point charge. That's the beauty of electrodynamics. So let's just clean this up a bit. Let's pull out the constants. So you have a 60 pi square epsilon square. So these constants they cancel out, they'll get right there's a square over there. And for the integrals you have you have r to the power of four divided by big R to the power of six. And here you have r to the power of four multiplied by r squared, that's why you get this. So integrating these are is fairly easy, so you get this expression goes from 0 to r. For this, you get negative 1 over r from r to a. So uh, let's move on to evaluating these. So before before I round up the integrals, let's just cancel out the, the constants. So for the constants, you have q squared divided by 4 pi epsilon square. And for the integrals, substitute r there, you have r to the power of 5 divided by r to the power of 6, you get 1 over 5r. And then for this, this is just equal to negative 1 over a plus 1 over r. So negative 1 over a plus 1 over r. And so we have this, this nice uh, result here. Just 6 minus a. So this is the volume integral. So the second component, the surface integral, is something like this. And the trick is to note that uh, the electric field, because it's uh, uniformly charged, it's always the field lines are always perpendicular to the surface of uh, to the surface. So that's why inside the surface integral, this dot product just melts away. So essentially, you can just write this as this whole thing is equal to the potential at the surface of the sphere times the electric field, so the magnitude of the electric field at the surface, multiplied by the surface area, so 4 pi a square. 
And so the, the potential of the surface, this is just this, right? You can treat it as a point charge. Same for the electric field, you can treat it as a point charge. So you get something like this, 4 pi a squared. So thankfully these cancel out. So you get q squared 4 pi epsilon squared divided by 1 over a. And so now we need to go back to this formula. We've evaluated these two in integrals. We're going to add these up and then multiply by epsilon divided by 2. So the energy is equal to epsilon over 2 multiplied by this result. This is the volume integral. So q squared over 4 pi epsilon squared. 6 over 5r minus 1 over a plus the surface integral. So q squared over 4 pi epsilon squared times 1 over a. And I think you see where this is going. So one thing to note is that as a tends to infinity, this whole thing is going to be equal to 0. That, and that's exactly what we want, right? Because in the book, uh, Griffiths argues that once we extend the bounds of this integral, so instead of a uh, spherical shell with a radius of a, we extend this sphere so that it incorporates uh, all of space, so it goes from it goes to infinity, this expression is going to turn to 0. That's why we get uh, this nice formula that we used in the previous video. And this is going to incorporate all of space. And so this problem here confirms this fact that the surface integral component is going to tend towards 0 as a tends towards infinity. And also you see that in this case, uh, even when it doesn't tend to infinity, the a's cancel out, which in the end gives us a rather nice expression. So I think you see where this is going. Three. So let's pull the three and fives out. And then we're left with something like this. Q squared divided by R. And then once again, we've arrived at the same answer, this time using a third method.